Then contract agreements. Ah, okay. You said who is your major supplier? Who is your major vendor? Give us the contract you have. And that will show you so many things. So what you have done is you've asked the question, you've test the assertions. And where you should confirm the assertions, the answer to those assertions are these documents. So for other income, the same thing, contract documents. For instance, the person say has dividend. You ask him, give me the share purchase agreement or contracts. Share purchase contracts. Then check your bank data or bank statement to see where that income was paid in. If it is dividend, ask for dividend warrant. Even if it is electronic, you will see, it should give, show you the email where he was advised that so 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 dividend is due to you. Then Telex transfer. Telex transfer, this relates to when you receive income from abroad or you transfer money abroad. So for instance, when a company receives income from abroad and the income is paid through approved CBN channel, that is through a bank, a recognized bank, and it is reported, in the account, the money came in. Usually, the document that will show that X amount was transferred is called Telex transfer. So let them give you Telex transfer if they have other import that is exempted from tax. The valuation reports, valuation reports, investment valuation and all that. Then the FRS portal and the between those credits. So you can use all this to confirm other income. Then for expenditure, ask for the purchase receipts. Where is the invoice they gave you? Import documents. If the products were imported, where is the form M? You're using uh, paying the vendor <clears throat> or the supplier. Where is the bill of lading? Where is the inspector's uh, reports? So these are documents you can use to confirm. Bank data slash bank statements. Then your VAT returns to go and check for your inputs. If they have input VAT, this you can use it to confirm your cost of sales. Then third party payment uh, vouchers, third party payment vouchers or invoices, third party payment uh, invoices. Then board approvals, there are some expenses that the board has to approve before they can work. Then agreements with your vendors. So what we've given you here is a pool of information. We are not saying that go and ask for all these things at the same time, no. This is a pool of information. You have this information, at your disposal. So there is no scratching of your head to know what to ask the taxpayer. No, that is, this is what we have given to you now. You have the principle. You want to confirm, is this thing complete? So how do you ask this? Provide me with your sales ledger for so, 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 so period. And just choose 
one month, two months, three months. Give me. And as that, or give me your sales invoice. Check. Or you go and carry your VAT returns. So these are pool of information for you to review and ask questions. So we believe at the end of today, you will not run off short of ideas or questions to ask when you are carrying out a review of what? Tax returns. So this is just income statement. So let's go. Let's look at financial position. What are the principles? Do the asset, liability, and equity actually exist? All these assets that is in this book, do they exist? Right and obligation, does the entity hold or control the right over the asset and have present obligation to pay liability? So we are testing the assertions. Completeness. Are all assets, liability, equity, that should have been recorded, been recorded? Then valuation, which is carrying amount. Are all assets, liability, equity, including the financial statement, at the appropriate amount and any resulting va valuation or adjustment are appropriately recorded? So, these are the principles that are guiding your review.